Ferrari gave it everything for its home Grand Prix at Monza. It went aggressive with its setup choices, put fresh engines in both cars, and at a track that was always going to play to its car's limited set of strengths, it did all it could to maximise those traits, hoping its gamble might be enough to upset Red Bull. While the result may have felt inevitable even on Saturday afternoon when Carlos Sainz beat Max Verstappen to pole, Ferrari put up as much of a fight as could have been expected, giving the Tifosi plenty to cheer for in a season where that has rarely been the case. So while yes, in the end, Ferrari had to settle for best of the rest in third and fourth, it was at least a fighting third and fourth. By now, it almost seems harsh to call a defeat to Red Bull a failure, but in Ferrari's case, it was at least a heroic failure. Verstappen was made to work for his record-setting 10th win in a row, which he said made it more fun, and the Ferrari drivers also gave Sergio Perez a very hard time as he eventually made his way through to complete a Red Bull 1-2. For Ferrari to be a genuine pole position contender and an almost victory contender marked a huge turnaround after one of its worst weekends of the season, just a week earlier at the Dutch Grand Prix, where Sainz felt Ferrari only had the sixth fastest car. But that was partly expected, even if the size of the turnaround surprised rival teams that were predicting Ferrari would be more competitive this weekend. Zandvoort was always going to accentuate the weaknesses of a Ferrari car that has a fair few of them, whereas at Monza those weaknesses would be less of an issue and Ferrari's handful of strengths came to the fore as expected. Those strengths are straight line speed and great slow corner balance, plus a car that rides curbs well. If you cast your mind back to Baku, that combination put Charles Leclerc on pole there too. And as was the case in Azerbaijan, Red Bull's pace advantage was bigger in race trim than it was over a single lap, so 2023's dominant team was more vulnerable on Saturday at Monza, but it could retain a confidence that things would probably be okay come the race. Even so, it still took a phenomenal qualifying lap, this time from Sainz, to deny Verstappen by 13 thousandths of a second. Sainz nailed the chicanes in the first part of the lap to build an advantage, then nailed the remaining corners where the Red Bull would be stronger to cling on by the finest of margins. Ferrari's gamble was to trim the car out as much as possible to make it a rocket ship down the straights. It meant the drivers would have to hang on in the corners. Sainz described the car as feeling light to drive because there's so little downforce pushing it into the track. To get the most out of it, he said you have to remove that fear from your head and hope the car will grip. The super skinny rear wing, which gave Ferrari a terminal speed advantage of 7 km an hour over Red Bull, also required more front downforce being taken away to keep the car balanced. That made it even trickier to drive, carrying a greater risk of punishing the left front tyre through Monza's high load right hand corners. It was a gamble worth taking. Despite Monza's old school reputation as a cathedral for classic slipstreaming racing, overtaking is actually pretty difficult, not helped by the impact of the DRS being minimized because the wings are already trimmed out on all the cars. So track position can be very important, as science proved in the opening spell of the race. The lead Ferrari held Verstappen off for longer than most would have expected, perhaps even Verstappen too. Max knew he had to be patient. He could see Sainz's car was sliding around more than his, so he just had to wait for that to result in the Ferrari losing grip to the point that Sainz would become vulnerable. But until Sainz finally cracked with a lockup into the first chicane, Verstappen's calm radio messages, where even he was conveying a sense of inevitability that just required him to wait for the race to come to him, was starting to sound a little more concerned about how fast the Ferrari was down the straights. In the end, the pressure from Verstappen paid off, and the loss of grip for Sainz that Max was waiting for created the lockup that compromised the Spaniard into the first chicane. Verstappen went through on the run to the next one, and he didn't look back. Any chance Ferrari might have had of immediately diving for the pits with either car in an attempt to get back ahead of Verstappen by pitting first was compromised by the condensed nature of the pack at that point, meaning it would be hard to find clear track to make use of the fresher tyres. The team was also concerned about tyre life for the second stint if it pitted that early, and besides, Verstappen didn't waste any time clearing off, so he was hardly going to be a sitting duck in that situation. Ferrari realised much earlier in the season that its car came alive on tracks where the downforce levels were lower. So with that in mind, and probably influenced by the idea of putting on a show at home in an otherwise challenging season, it committed a long time ago to producing bespoke updates for Monza. Senior Ferrari engineer Jock Clear said it wasn't just a sentimental decision, although he admitted that Sainz's pole position was worth huge amounts to Ferrari from a motivational standpoint. 
But beyond that, if Monza coincidentally offered Ferrari one of its best chances of the season to grab a good result, then putting more of its development effort into a package that worked there made more sense than it would for most on the grid. So while the other teams were trimming out their existing wings, for example, to the lowest levels possible, Ferrari turned up with a Monza special that allowed it to run even less downforce than everybody else. Red Bull, meanwhile, arrived with two wing options, both of which were higher downforce than the Ferrari specification. The team tried both of them in first practice, one with Verstappen and one with Perez. Perez was 0.65 seconds faster than Verstappen down the straight, while Verstappen made up eight tenths in the corners. But while Verstappen was faster overall with the bigger wing, the team went for the smaller one. That might have partly been because Perez was just under two tenths slower when his usual gap is slightly more than that, but also because Red Bull would have known by that stage that Ferrari had gone aggressive and it knew it would need a raceable level of downforce that would either allow its drivers to pass Ferraris if necessary or at the very least not be vulnerable to attack by them on the straights with DRS. While Red Bull was 7 km per hour down on the Ferrari on the straights with the smaller wing, if it had taken the bigger wing that difference was estimated to have been around 12 kph. Given how difficult Verstappen found it to get past in the first part of the race, if he'd been another 5 kph down, there's every chance he wouldn't have got his shot at Sainz when he did. Clear didn't want to give away too much about why the Ferrari works so well on low downforce tracks, although we know it wanted to produce a low drag car for this year after that emerged as a strength of Red Bulls in 2022. Clear said it's not just the case of being rapid down the straights and hanging on in the corners, pointing out that for some reason in low downforce spec, the car was competitive through the parabolica at Monza, which is usually the sort of corner where Ferrari struggles. But the fact he didn't want to say too much was telling. The important thing was Ferrari now knows why the car has the strengths and weaknesses it has, and that, more than what happened on track at Monza, offers hope for the future. The problem for everybody who's been smashed by Red Bull so far during this rule cycle is understanding two things, what Red Bull is getting so right and what the rest are getting so wrong. Ferrari has recently started claiming it at least knows the answer to the second question and it believes its performance at Monza was further proof of that. Jock Clear said the team could take huge encouragement from the fact it expected to do well at Monza and its performance met those expectations. That hasn't always been the case this year, so it's a sign that Ferrari now has an understanding of what's going on with its car. Earlier in the season, Ferrari would get anomalies where it couldn't work out why the car wasn't performing. That's a sign of missing pieces in a team's understanding of what makes a car quick and what makes it slow. But in Clear's words, Ferrari now knows this animal quite well, and for its Monza expectations to be met is further motivation that we know what we're doing. That means it can have a growing confidence that the changes it wants to make for next year, which we've talked about in a previous video, are also being made from a position of genuine knowledge rather than guesswork or simply trying to go in the opposite direction to what hasn't worked so far. None of this means Ferrari can now make its 2023 car quick everywhere. For example, while the team says this car rides the curbs well, which helped it through the chicanes at Monza, that's not going to be enough to translate into a quick car on the twisty streets of Singapore. Ferrari is bracing itself for a weekend closer to what it endured at Zandvoort rather than what we've just seen at Monza. Yes, it will try to learn from what went so badly wrong in the Netherlands, but that learning will only take it so far. However, there will be other races before the year is out, ones where high downforce levels aren't required, where Ferrari can feel more confident. It's unlikely to give Red Bull as much of a hard time as it did at Monza, but it can at least think about winning the battle for best of the rest again before 2023 is over.